Welcome into Moscow, Idaho. The Idaho Vandals and the Idaho State Bengals rivalry basketball on this Saturday afternoon in the Big Sky. These two teams have been getting together since 1932. Of late, it's been all Bengals in this series. They've won the last seven, 11 of the last 12, and Idaho's hoping to buck that trend this afternoon. Trevor Williams with you. No Stephen Madison. He's out under the weather this afternoon. Our best wishes to him to start feeling better soon. But we've got a treat between the Vandals and the Bengals. There's no other way to put what happened to Idaho on Thursday night than heartbreak. The Vandals up by seven with a minute 24 to go against Weber State. That's when this press started for the Wildcats. That was the second consecutive turnover. The third got Weber State within a single possession. It came on that very next inbounds and a put back here by Alex Chu. Got Weber State within striking distance. Dylan Jones, the leading man in the big sky, he drove in, got a foul, got to the free throw line, and made both of his shots after this foul to put the Wildcats up by one. Idaho did have one more opportunity with Quinn Danker, but his three-pointer was long, and it was a crushing loss for the Vandals on Thursday night. For Idaho State, they were up in Cheney against Eastern Washington, led in that game by Braden Parker, and he's the do-it-all big man for these Bengals. 20 points last time out, but he's fourth all-time in blocks at Idaho State. He's the 25th player in program history to score 1,000 or more points, and he, along with Julius Mims, who we'll see on Idaho's side, two of the best shot blockers in the big sky. And that means be before we get going here this afternoon, our keys to the game brought to you by Jeremiah Johnson Brewing Company. Do well. Well, in this one, it'll be important for the Idaho Vandals to be able to take care of things rebounding-wise. They did a great job of that against Weber State. 28-22 advantage on the glass. Idaho State is about four rebounds better per game than Idaho in terms of rebounding margin. So that will be something to watch for the Vandals. Idaho State, one of the better defenses in the Big Sky. Second in scoring defense in the conference. So want to ratchet that pressure up against Idaho. And both teams obviously looking to control emotions here in a rivalry matchup on this Saturday afternoon. Idaho starting with the basketball. Quinn Denker trying to lob Julius Mims, and it was tipped out of there by Kyrie Huey. Idaho State won the first meeting between these two teams back on January the 18th, 64 to 59. Starting lineups brought to you by the Moscow Monarch Motel, locally owned boutique motel at 6th and Jackson. Find them online at moscomonarch.com. Blossom game after forcing the turnover. Neal for three, too long. That's the Vandal starting five. Same of late. Still no D'Angelo Minnis for Idaho. He was out last game as well. He is not in a boot today, but still on crutches. The starting five for Idaho State of Arrington, Tomley, Huey, Griffin, and Parker. Parker working here in the post and couldn't convert off glass. Both teams getting their first shots up now this afternoon. Denker going to let a three fly. Mims has an offensive rebound. Second life for Idaho on the possession. Lob to Mims. Couldn't quite convert. Right idea by Idaho and a nice find. Both teams shot it really well earlier in the week. Idaho State on the road up at Eastern Washington and Idaho here at home against Weber State. A second turnover against the Bengals trying to feed Braden Parker. Parker is a presence there in the post. 6'8", 250 out of Preston, Idaho. I mentioned he's done pretty much everything in his career at Idaho State. He can stretch it out with a shot as well. Tyson Rose, kind of similar story for Idaho in terms of really turning it on late from distance. Blossing game inside the arc. Still looking for our first made shot here. Couple minutes in. Malik Arrington with it. Just turn around for Miguel Tomley. Tomley hemmed off on the end line. Four to shoot. 
Parker tries to go, lost it off his foot. Back to Idaho, three turnovers here in these opening possessions, three turnovers and four possessions for Idaho State. Blossing game off the handoff, kicking EJ Neal open in the corner. Neal's second three-point try won't go. Offensive rebound, Rose, and he gets bumped. Couple free throws for Kyson Rose. We're mentioning a moment ago, he's really been turning it on for Idaho. Double figure scoring each of the last four games now for Rose. He's been in double figures seven total times this season. So it's really been of late for him that he's a caught fire and he opens the scoring with this free throw. Here's the foul that got him there. First thing to set it up. He didn't get boxed out on that offensive rebound. Got to a good position. Both free throws good for Kyson Rose. Idaho has the first two points here this afternoon. Parker back up high with Arrington. Both teams using some tighter rotations of late. Eight and nine deep. Arrington bouncing the post in between the wickets of Huey. Rose got on the floor for it. Neal gonna drive this time under the cup, he's fouled. Chance for a three-point play for EJ Neal. Had 20 points a couple games ago against Eastern Washington, his division one best, and that's just blazing speed along the end line. And he's really been playing with that emotion of late as well. City College of San Francisco before Idaho, where he was a two-time league defensive player of the year. He was definitely noticeable on the defensive end against Weber State back on Thursday night. Now has Idaho out to a 5-0 advantage. Good start for the Vandals, trying to flush what happened in the final minute 24 that we talked about in the open. A crushing loss on Thursday. Arrington fouled in the lane. His chance to return a three-point play opportunity. Malik Arrington was the distributor on Thursday night with a career-high nine assists. They're taking the harm in the lane. Finishing that teardrop. Former high school teammate with Trey Blossingame of the Idaho Vandals at Auburn High School over in Western Washington. His three-point play, the first points of the afternoon for the Bengals. Fouls on your screen, we'll get those corrected. There are no fouls right now in this game. Or pardon me, our stats not showing up here at the monitor. Fouls on uh, Griffin and Parker for Idaho State, and one on Rose for Idaho is what's indicated, but there's not been a foul whistled so far. We'll see if those get wiped. Seven to shoot, Quinn Denker. Decks it a couple times, Kyson Rose on a drive, goes straight in and Rose finishes against some contact. A tremendous couple of years at Central Washington, one season at Walla Walla Community College where he was outstanding in the NWAC last year. A.J. Bergen. Back in the hands of Arrington. Neal almost jumped a pass at the wing. Seven to shoot for Idaho State. Idaho bringing some choking pressure up top. Arrington able to finish on the drive. He has all five here for Idaho State at the start. Danker over to Neal. Neal getting around the corner. Arrington collects the miss. Here he is out and running. Arrington had Randstrom off to his left, tries to go off glass instead. Nice follow by Bergen to knot it up at seven. A.J. Bergen, who's playing in his 76th career game at Idaho State. A junior out of San Diego, Kyson Rose. Straight on three wide right. Bergen and Idaho State a chance to take their first lead. Randstrom looking into the post. 
Parker back out with Tomley, and he's reached in on by E.J. Neal. That will be the first foul of the afternoon, and it takes us to a timeout. Football score here in the first five and a half minutes, all nodded at a touchdown apiece. All right, I got to clarify my own error here as we take a look in at the Idaho State huddle. I'm missing Steven Madison badly. He's out sick here to this afternoon, but uh, I was scribbling down and ones, and there were some fouls in there that definitely did count because we saw three-point plays. Anyways, Ryan Looney, head coach of Idaho State, he's been great in this rivalry. We mentioned the Bengals have won seven in a row in the series, 11-1 and one in the last 12 games. Former coach at Seattle Pacific, two-time coach of the year there in the GNAC. Now fifth season at Idaho State, and he's trying to get the Bengals up these big sky standings. Coming into play today, Idaho State right on that cut line between not having to play in the opening round of the Big Sky Conference Tournament. Important game for them here in many ways in this rivalry. Parker letting a three go. Mims bothered it, and he is able to scramble to the rebound. So the fouls when we factor in those and ones, Griffin and Parker have a foul each for Idaho State, and Idaho one on EJ Neal, one on Kyson Rose. Out of the corner, Taryn Frank checked in, missed the three. Mims tipped it to Arrington. Bergen down to the post. Parker trying to decide if he'll go. Does after a couple power dribbles, and he just bodies Julius Mims there in the post. That's where Parker can really use advantage of that size. Roughly the same height as Mims. But he's got some strength on Julius there in the post. Lob down to Taryn Frank, who corrals it. Frank trying to work down against Bergen. Parker comes to help, gets a piece of it. And the rebound hauled in by Randstrom. Briggs Randstrom. Retro freshman from Eagle, Idaho. Parker was down in the post. He's back up now. Going to get another opportunity on Mims. Let's see if he tries to back him down once again. There he goes. Couple bodies into him and a right-handed hook for Braden Parker. So now he's got his first couple buckets. Idaho State on a run here. Now leading by four, 11-7. Dinker crossing over with seven on the timer. Stopped up, has to fade away from inside the free throw line. Nice touch from Quinn Dinker on his first make. Idaho's been able to force four turnovers, but not getting a lot off of those in the early going. Hand check on Dinker. See Kyson Rose, EJ Neal back in. Back in is Kyrie Huey as well for Idaho State. Parker Tomley will take his seat and a new, pardon me, all the five on the floor have already been on for Idaho State. Griffin back as well, Isaiah Griffin. Freshman who's from North Carolina. Huey down in the post, gets doubled late by Neal. Shot missed, Frank comes away with it. Randstrom hit the floor. Quickly into the post with Rose the other way, trying to work on Huey. Did so with a pivot under the cup. Huey the good rebound. Rebounding advantage now for Idaho State. Taryn Frank intercepting a pass down along the end line. Frank trying to get going, averaging seven points a game. He does have 18 as a season high. Quinn Denker lets it go out of the corner. Rebound down to Bergen. Idaho is 0 for their first six from three. Three of 14 shooting start. Idaho State five of eight, hampered by the five turnovers in the early going. Bergen lets it go, NBA range three. And last touched by Huey to take us to a timeout. Bengals use a run to take a lead in this rivalry game. 11 to nine as we hit our second media timeout. Big Sky Hoops this afternoon from ESPN Plus.
Idaho's been scoreless in the last minute, 51. Vandals under first year head coach Alex Pribble. Look at the last five. Some really close ones in there, even in the losses against talented teams in Montana, Eastern Washington, and Weber State. And one against the Wildcats that the Vandals want back, leading by seven there in the final couple minutes. But still a lot of positive signs for Alex Pribble's guys. Idaho State in the last five put a scare into Eastern Washington on Thursday night. Before that, they had won three consecutive and had that double overtime loss to Northern Colorado. So a couple teams right now that are hitting some of their better potential on the season in play, making for an intriguing afternoon. Stinker down into Rose, lost the handle, but saved it to Frank. Vandals resetting the possession. Christian Gonzalez into the game, and he muscles down the end line for the bucket. Twenty-third game Gonzalez has played on this freshman season for Idaho. Everything all even at 11. Rose trying to defend up Huey, gives him the end line where the double comes from Taryn Frank, and E.J. Neal helps take it away to Quinn Denker. Denker against the grain, and he ends up getting fouled. Bailed out there in some tough pressure. The foul comes on Malik Arrington, his first. But Idaho turning turnover number six into offense the other way using that double team. Denker there didn't have help. You know, he may have asked to pull it out. They got Arrington for a hand there on the body of Denker. Three points now for Quinn Denker. Parker and Tomley back for Idaho State. And Denker's second free throw won't go. Denker, who's a double-figure scorer in five of the last six games for Idaho. Vandals have a one-point lead, 12 to 11. Arrington into the post. Parker's all alone for the two-handed punch. Six for Braden Parker. Coming off that 20-point effort against Eastern Washington. Score on your screen, not correct. It's 13 to 12. Idaho down by one. Takeaway though, Tomley punched it free to Griffin. Tomley crossing over. Kicks to the corner. Arrington on the behind the back. Dribble gets fouled and has a chance for his second three point play of the afternoon. Seven now for Malik Arrington. And took the hit from Quinn Danker, his second foul. That's costly for Idaho early. Already down a guard in D'Angelo Minnis. Trey Blossingay may have an increased role now. You're halfway through this first half. Arrington's free throw spits out. Julius Mims waiting to check in for Idaho. Gonzalez around the screen, flying in against some contact. Frank Strong up with it, and Parker fouls him on the putback. Second personal on Braden Parker. So a little foul trouble for key players for both teams now midway through the first half. Gonzalez wanted a foul call on his initial drive, and Frank was able to get it on the second go. Taryn Frank, a 62% free throw shooter. He buries the first. Kyrie Huey, you see back for Idaho State. Parker will take a seat with those two fouls. So he and Quinn Denker over to the benches so far for these two teams with the pair of fouls each in this first half. Frank's second free throw not there. Good rebound by Huey extending out to it. Randstrom the trailer on the play. Huey in the post. 
Tyson Rose batting it off the backboard. Frank two on two, spreads the floor out wide. Ends up taking it underneath. Rose there to help out. Power dribble to back it up. His shot in and out. Couple free throws coming for Kyson Rose. Kyrie Huey picks up his first personal. Rose here at the line. Here's the first of those two shots. It's good for Kyson. So five points now. Julius Mims back in for Idaho. 4-1 advantage on the offensive glass for the Vandals. The second chance opportunity for Kyson Rose. Led him to the free throw line. And he ties the game up once again. Six points now here in the first half for Kyson Rose. He leads the Vandals with six. Malik Arrington leading Idaho State with seven. Brings the basketball over the timeline. Good crowd in Moscow. Lively energy in this building. Of course, everybody gets up for a rivalry game. Mims getting a hand in. Gonzalez deflecting it to Blossom game. Idaho's seventh turnover force here in the first half. Neal to Blossom game. Saw window and used the basket for a little protection on the lay-in. First points for Trey Blossom game. The former high school teammate of Malik Arrington. Guys going toe to toe on opposite ends of this rivalry game. Idaho back in front by two. In the post, Huey trying to get a handle on it. Double teamed. Rose forced the tough shot. It's going to stay with Idaho State when we come back. Idaho leading by a pair, 17-15 here with 7.48 to go in the first half. It's a five-point scoring run for the Idaho Vandals right now over the last couple minutes. No scoring in that stretch for Idaho State, obviously. Vandals starting 0 of 6 from 3, but they're starting to get inside. Five different scores from the field for Idaho. Blossom game, Danker, Rose, Neal, and Gonzalez. Parker and Arrington have three made shots each for Idaho State, and then one in there for Bergen as well. This is an important game for both these teams, as we mentioned. Idaho State trying to get back on track after having that three game winning streak snapped. Ryan Looney trying to get his guys out of the back four in the Big Sky Conference standings, getting to better position for conference tournament time. We're over halfway on our way to March here in the month of February. Arrington had it poked out for a moment, got it back, is fouled, has a chance for his third three-point play opportunity. That's nine points now for Arrington. Gonzalez called for that foul. Arrington has cashed in two three-point play opportunities. He has 10 points now. Neal swimming down under the pressure, and he gets hand-checked. A.J. Bergen called for the foul. Trying to toss it down into the corner. Gonzalez, nobody there for the Vandals. Turnover 
back to Idaho State. That's just the third turnover on Idaho despite forcing seven. It's not an Idaho State team that turns it over a bunch, just 11 turnovers per game, the average for the Bengals. So a little uncharacteristic at the start in the first 10 minutes of this one, even though it's slowed up now of late. Better shooting start though for the Bengals, still north of 50%. Eight of 15 here from the get-go. A hold down underneath this could be against Julius Mims. Trying to keep Kyrie Huey away. First foul on Mims. Huey third in the big sky in field goal percentage of 54%. 25 starts in 27 games. Alex Pribble pleading his case over there. Boston game trying to defend Tomley. Ends up going back left as Tomley. Stops it up there with six to shoot. Bergen lets a long three go and he splashes it down for Idaho State. Five points now for A.J. Bergen. Coming off a 13-point performance against Eastern Washington. DJ Neal comes around off a handoff here. He goes down the lane against Bergen. No whistle. A lot of arms out at the sides for Idaho. Randstrom getting it back to Bergen. Now Randstrom out of the corner for three. Quick trigger, Mims has the rebound for Idaho. Ido trying to get some shots to go. It's been a little bit for the Vandals. Blossing him down to the end line, kick out with Rose. Rose splits a couple and a charge on Kyson Rose. That's his second personal. Two on Denker, now two on Rose with 5.44 to go in the half. Denker's waiting to check back in. Gonzalez and Rose heading off. Denker coming back in along with Taryn Frank. We are having some trouble with our courtside stats. I think it is a widespread problem as you see the travel there, or the, pardon me, the charge there. Rose kind of out of control into that foul. Idaho State's brought in Trent Johnson, and Johnson swatted away by Mims. How about that defensive play? Julius Mims is right up there at the top of the big sky and blocks shots. Neal saving it to Blossing Game for three, and the Vandals sorely needed that. It started with Julius Mims on the defensive end, and then Blossing Game burying the three for Idaho to get him back within one. That was the first shot attempt for Johnson here in the last four games. That last time down, Huey in the post. And Mims again, right there in traffic. Second opportunity though for Huey who came out with it. Third try won't go for the Bengals. As Bergen had his opportunity. Neal now behind with Blossing Game. Blossing Game lines him up back to back and the Vandals take the lead. Two-point lead for Idaho now here in the first half. After a pair of blossom game threes, his first three-pointers of the game, he had a couple on Thursday night as well. Eight first-half points now for him. The drive by Bergen left it off. Mims applying the defense on Huey down there. Danker now up the floor. Idaho has some newfound rhythm on the offensive end. At least the Bengals can settle in this time defensively. Been the transition play that's got Blossing Game open the last couple times, and he's fouled on the dribble. And this will lead to one and one opportunity for the Vandals at the free throw line when we come back. Foul on Miguel Tomley. We come back. Idaho now leads by a pair, and they'll go to the line for a one and one. Two-point lead for the Idaho Vandals, 23-21.
Trey Blossing game big in this stretch for Idaho with the three pointers. And in transition, Idaho has been able to break it out and get these opportunities for Blossingham. This was off the defensive play by Julius Mims. And Blossingham just funneling in behind the play nicely as the trailer to hit that three pointer from the wing. And defi definite confidence for the sophomore guard. Eight turnovers forced by Idaho. They've only committed four. See blossing game. Getting the handshake there from D'Angelo Menace. The Vandals hope to have Menace back soon. Kind of on crutches at times. Some kind of apparent leg injury. It wasn't a boot on Thursday, but not anymore. Alex Pribble has had to deal with some injuries for his Vandals here in his first season, but his guys are fighting really hard here through the midpoint down the stretch in February. Blossing game hitting the front end of the one and one. So nine points now for Trey Blossing game. That's definitely a positive sign for Idaho. The ability they've played with how hard they've played. Even after some of the tough finishes they've had in close games this year in the lane back into the game Malik Arrington and he's able to hit the floater. Arrington has 12 of the 23 for Idaho State. The double comes for Danker. He's able to find Mims out of it still. And Mims, he can shoot that three. Almost a 40% three-point shooter this season. Not that time. Mims now trying to work against some of the bigger size of Gavin Gilstrap, who hands off there on the wing with Bergen, but he stepped on the sideline. Turnover number nine for Idaho State. And that is something that Ryan Looney's guys are going to have to clean up at the half. It's the giveaways. It's led to fewer possessions. They really kept the Idaho float. Idaho State, one of its last seven from the floor. Vandals have used this stretch and the play of Trey Blossom game to get back ahead. Mims off the shot fake. Five to shoot. Denker on the wing with it. Denker tries to split two. Gets it off glass. Gets his own miss. Puts it back. Not there. An individual effort by Denker on that play, trying to keep it alive for Idaho. So this game has been close most of the way between these two in-state rivals. Arrington trying to leave it off. It's a kicked ball. Denker getting a little talking to from the officials. Things getting heated here late in the half. Denker frustrated because he felt like he had earned a foul last time down. You see Alex Pribble talking to the officials as well. Feels like more of the frustration coming from the Idaho side right now late in the half. Tom Lee, Euro stepping back into the lane. Runner wouldn't go, put back up and in by Bergen. Seven now for A.J. Bergen. Idaho State back in front. Idaho led by five. They were five nothing out of the gates. Idaho State has had a lead of four. Neal out of the corner too long. Gilstrap the rebound opportunity and Taryn Frank fouls him on the rebound. First foul on Frank. And free throws coming the other way for Gavin Gilstrap. Gilstrap who's from Spokane was at only college before Idaho State. Came in with some size here in this half with the two fouls for Braden Parker. Gilstrap had only been averaging two minutes a game in the last three games, and he did not play against Eastern Washington. Front end of the one and one, no good. Denker trying to lead a surge, looking to get Idaho back in front. 
Bengals have fought through a rough shooting stretch with some good defense and a foul. Gilstrap holding on to Rose. This will be a one and one opportunity for Kyson Rose. Rose kind of wiping away his eye like he may have gotten poked. Idaho State making a substitution of Briggs Randstrom back in for Trent Johnson. Only one player with two fouls right now in Parker, but Huey has also sat here over the recent stretch. Rose hitting the first. He's now got five free throws made for his seven points. He very well is on his way to scoring in double figures for a fifth consecutive game, really becoming a presence for Idaho. And he hits them both. Eight points now for Kyson Rose. Six of them at the free throw line. Mims, Frank, Danker, Neal, blossing game for Idaho. Tom Lee with Bergen, Arrington, Randstrom, and Gilstrap for Idaho State. Approaching final minute of the first half. Gilstrap on the handoff for Tom Lee. Eight to shoot. Randstrom got free in the corner. Randstrom's three off the mark. Denker trying to get to it. A whistle came, and it's a foul against Idaho on the rebound. Idaho State's one of five from three. Neither team shooting it great from three here in the first half. Idaho's two and nine. Bergen at the line. This is a one and one opportunity. Last one and one for Idaho State. Bergen, good free throw shooter on the season. He hits the front end. Last time out, the 13 points against Eastern. One of four double figure scoring games this year for Bergen. He's now two points away from his fifth, and now a point away after making both those free throws. Nine here in the half for Bergen. Idaho State with the seesaw back in front. Just what you want in a rivalry game. A close battle. Taryn Frank for three, wide open, and he buries it. Frank has struggled from beyond the arc this year. Good sign to see him hit one. Idaho trying to ratchet up defensively, get an opportunity to take a lead into the locker room as they could very well have a final offensive possession after this time down for the Bengals. It's been very back and forth of late. Tomley off the screen, gets open for three, and Tomley puts Idaho State in front. First points, Miguel Tomley, the 38% three-point shooter, has really let it fly over 160 attempts this season for Tomley to put the Bengals in front. Denker and the Vandals, as we said, will have final possession of the half. Denker pulling up straight on for three, and Quinn Denker answers for Idaho. Quick inbound for the Bengals. Tomley launches it from three quarters court, but Idaho answering in the final seconds to take a two-point lead into the locker room on the three-pointer from Quinn Denker. Buckle up, it's a great one here. Rivalry hoops on this Saturday afternoon between the Vandals and the Bengals. We come back with our halftime up next. Back here at the half in Moscow, 24-23 lead, or pardon me, I'm getting thrown off. Our stat monitors have been out here most of the first half. 32-30, the advantage for Idaho at the break after the Quinn Danker three-pointer before the break. And uh, a lot for the Vandals to like after the opening 20 minutes of play back courtside. Trevor Williams with you here for ESPN Plus. And neither team was shooting it great from three. And then down the stretch here in the half, they started to lengthen out and get it going. Really good sign for these two teams as it was turnovers early that were a big problem for the Bengals in this one. They don't average a lot, just 11 a game, and Idaho really kind of got them out of sorts as we look at these first half hats, uh, first half stats brought to you by Northern Quest. Game on, and uh, you can see right now the 
eight on the screen. There's nine on the scoreboard. As I said, stats are kind of all a mess today. <laughs> but uh, that's the comparison right now here at the break between these two teams. And uh, the reason why these stats are off just a hair is because of the monitors trying to revert to about three minutes left in the half. So there are some differences in this. Uh, Idaho hit another three, as did Idaho State before the break. And in the paint, the Bengals, you can see, they were able to really get down and muscle in Braden Parker here in the first half as uh, he picked up a couple early fouls. So did Quinn Denker for Idaho. And so battling through some of that foul trouble at the beginning of the second half is gonna be critical for those these two teams in this one. Both fighting for a rivalry win, bragging rights within the state, but also for positioning in the big sky as we move closer to the month of March. Still coming up here at the half, we're gonna take a look around the men's and women's side of the big sky standings. We'll also talk about a couple standouts after our first 20 minutes of play. That's when the halftime continues here from Northern Quest. We're back here at the half in Moscow, Idaho. Two point lead for the Idaho Vandals. I guess the students are making some balloon animals. Well, there's a hat being fashioned out here at the break. That's pretty talented if you come in just with that skill ready to make that. But uh, students enjoying this one in a rivalry game, close contest between the Vandals and the Bengals. Trevor Williams back with you courtside here inside this beautiful Idaho Central Credit Union Arena as we're going to take a look around the big sky right now. And there are some really exciting games going on. A few that are at half right now on the men's side. We've got some close women's finals to tell you about coming up. Starting with the men's scores right now at the break. Other games at halftime. Weber State has an 11-point lead up on the road against Eastern Washington. Remember, Weber State has rattled off five consecutive wins in conference play and Sacramento State leading Northern Colorado by five at the break. That is at home down in California. Sacramento State only a couple big sky wins this year, so trying to pick up their third. You've still got NAU, Portland State coming up at four o'clock and Montana State and Montana at six o'clock. Those times we're talking Pacific uh, based on where we are watching this one between the Vandals and the Bengals. Taking a look right now at standings in the big sky. This, of course, pending all of the results that we are talking about. Could be a big one for Weber State trying to find a way to get up into second around northern Colorado. Idaho, as we mentioned, they're in danger of being even with three wins with Sacramento State if the Hornets can hold on in the second half. So the Vandals trying to get up those standings and see if they can pick up one on Idaho State and start working to try to leapfrog Northern Arizona. That's what the Vandals would have to do to get into a more advantageous spot if uh, Portland State still lurking up there at the six wins as well. Certainly work to do for Idaho. If the tournament started today, this is what the pairings would look like in Boise. You'd see the Vandals and the Hornets and the Vikings and the Lumberjacks. Eastern Washington there getting the bye along with Northern Colorado. And Idaho State able to stay out of those back four They'd be facing Weber State right now. That would be big for the Bengals to stay out of that first game. So that's why this game is so important for them, trying to stay above that cut line. There are also some really great games going on on the women's side of things. We'll keep you uh, praise to those. Idaho State and Idaho are in a tight one. It was all tied with a few seconds left, actually just final now. Sarah Schmidt completing a three-point play for the Vandals to get them the win 49 to 48 there in Pocatello. And uh, we're hoping for as good of a matchup here in this men's game. Just two points separating these teams at the break. 32-30, the Idaho lead. We'll come back and get you set for the second half right after this here on ESPN+. Plus. All right, the students, they're working there in the student section. That gentleman had a hat early on, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, balloon animals being built over there now. So they are becoming resourceful over in that student section. Close game after the first 20 minutes, 32 to 30. Quinn Denker with the three-pointer that put Idaho ahead as we take a look at some of these stats from the first half. Both teams' opportunities for the three-point play, as we mentioned. 
Braden Parker early on was really steady in the post. He did pick up a couple fouls in the first half and that slowed him down. But this was on back to back possessions against Julius Mims. He was able to use his side to get to the basket. Six points for Parker in the first half. Harrington had three three point play opportunities. That was the six point for Parker, but it was also able to leave it off. And, and there's been some big three pointers and important moments for Idaho State as well. They had one just before Idaho's final three of the half. Trey Blossom game provided a lift for the Vandals. He hit one here and then in a consecutive possession with Julius Mims starting things on the defensive end, eventually ending up with EJ Neal. The Blossom game was able to get into position to hit his second three pointer. That was a look back at the first one. The Blossom game important to what the Vandals need to do in that first half. He led Idaho with nine points. This is the second where he came in as a trailer. And Idaho, despite not excellent three point shooting after the first half of play, they had two more than Idaho State at four to two to take the 32 to 30 lead. Over to the wing, a three for Tomley out of the break. We mentioned he loves to shoot him. Mims able to save it to Danker. That was Tomley's second try of the night. He hit his first in the first half. So here we are underway in half number two. Neal down into Rose, off the roll. He's swatted away by Kyrie Huey. Huey now getting into position in the post. That was a monster block by Huey. Now he goes down against Mims. Almost had the finish on the offensive end. It came back out. That would have capped the monstrous sequence for Huey. Lost game down to Rose. Rose trying to back it in, gets back to the right hand, but was leaning too far out. Ray Parker's back in with two fouls. Kyson Rose with two, Quinn Denker with two on Idaho's side. Parker for Idaho State trying to get back involved on the offensive end. Instead, it's Arrington stopped at the free throw line, ran into a wall in Rose, but the three from Isaiah Griffin is good. His first points this afternoon. But Idaho State in front, 33-32. Last three made baskets have been threes. Dinker trying to respond out of bounds. Back to the Bengals. State with three made three pointers after the make for Griffin. That was his first shot of the game last time down the floor. Arrington on the drive, plays a speed around Denker. That's a third foul on Quinn Denker. And created thanks to the speed from Arrington to blow past him. And Idaho will have to get up Chris Gonzalez for Quinn Denker just a couple minutes into the second half. Two shots. Well, Malik Arrington, 12 points in the first half. 18 is season high. He misses the front end of these shots. Arrington, a former defensive player of the year in the North Puget Sound League. In the state of Washington out of Auburn. It's the second free throw. 13 points now for Arrington. Puts the Idaho State lead back at two. No team is led by more than two possessions in the game today. Gonzalez on the drive. He's taking a bit of contact this afternoon, but he makes a second bucket. Last year in this building, these teams played to a 95-91 final, in which every basket was falling. Arrington around the screen. Tried to lob it up. I think he was hoping Parker could get there. Huey with a hand on it and a foot on the end line. Great energy in this building today. 
love a rivalry game, especially between two in-state teams. They don't like each other all too much. Now it is worth noting, Idaho women one by one. Julius Mims gets the lob, finishes it off glass. That's the first points for Julius Mims. Idaho by two, but these teams, it's been reinstated that they play in this rivalry for King Spud, this trophy that used to exist was actually rebuilt by the Idaho Art Department. For the Idaho men to pick that up, not only do they have to win because of the results earlier this year, to get it back to the University of Idaho, they have to win by 10. Batted out of play and back to the Vandals. That because for Idaho to get it back from Idaho State, their women and men had to win by a combined margin of 11 or more today. Both teams had to win, obviously, with the Bengals taking care of things in the first round of this rivalry. Into the post, Mims with the catch and the finish. Back-to-back -back buckets for Julius Mims on the find from Kyson Rose. Largest lead for Idaho since it was 5-0 in the early going. Tomley coming around off the screen, gets to the elbow. Over Rose, Huey offensive rebound, foul on the putback. Who's it against? It's on EJ Neal. No, Kyson Rose, it's his third. He and Quinn Denker each have three fouls. Foul trouble brewing for Idaho here with 16 minutes to go. So a correction from when we were going to break. The foul was on E.J. Neal as we expected. They called it out on the PA here against Kyson Rose. So Rose still has two. E.J. Neal, though, did pick up his third personal foul. Ido has that guy going, Julius Mims. His first two baskets have come on the last two offensive possessions for Idaho. And now they are correcting that foul here, so. They just announced to the crowd that it was on E.J. Neal. He's off the floor with three fouls. Quinn Denker is on the floor with three for Idaho. A couple shots here for Kyrie Huey, and he hits the first. First point for Huey. Ryan Looney looking over the play sheet. Huey almost rolled the second one in. So Idaho by three into the front court. Two-pointer on this possession would tie their largest lead of the game. Back when it was 5-0. Rose was watching to see if Mims would slip it. Now Gonzalez thinking about the drive from straight on. Didn't really have a way to finish, only two to shoot. Rose needing to go up. Idaho won't get it off in time. A shot clock violation forced by the Bengals. And even despite the makeoff glass for Chris Gonzalez, Rose was thinking at first that it was gonna be a jump ball situation. He was just trying to pull the ball out of there, but nobody took the bait for Idaho State. Arrington over half court for the Bengals. Able to find Randstrom, leaves it off with Parker. Mims gets a clean block. Parker, though, as it volleyballs around, gets it back and finishes with the left hand. First second half points for Braden Parker, sticking with that play. It was another block for Julius Mims. He's got a couple in this game. Rose from the wing. A three-pointer that gets just a beautiful kiss off the rim. And Rose into double figures. That's five straight games in double digits for Kyson Rose. Arrington trying to leave it down with Parker. Mims the interception. Denker opting to get Idaho into the half-court offense. Denker was on the larger Randstrom for a moment. Idaho State has switched it back. Gonzalez getting down to the baseline. 
Threading it through to Denker, seven to shoot. Denker against Tomley trying to back him down. Denker trying to hit a back cutting blossom game, but it's out of bounds. Back to Idaho State, Denker is saying the ball was tipped, but he's not gonna get that from the officials. Looked like blossom game batted it up in the air and then it hit the back of the backboard. Rose trying to battle the post, trying to deny Parker. Parker now going to body down Kyson Rose. Mims trying to come to help at the end. He ends up with the rebound instead, and he's fouled trying to pull it out. <laughs> fouled by Briggs Randstrom, his first personal. And Idaho's made a change. Instead of having Julius Mims pick up that battle with Parker, as you see the replay here on the rebound, now they get Kyson Rose on him. So you got a couple guys at 6'9", 250 that can battle in the post. Ranstrom trying to, or pardon me, Parker trying to stick with it. It'll be Idaho basketball. Parker's minutes held down in the first half because of the foul trouble. Only played a shorter while in that opening half of play. He gets the rebound after that one and done. Rideau State. Rose still trying to deny him. Rose playing with a couple fouls, remember. Bergen shot off the mark, and Mims has yet another rebound for Idaho. Mims in the last media timeout had six rebounds. He's had a couple since then. Blossom game now lobbing Mims. Ball didn't stay in his hands, though. So Idaho State has still weathered this tough stretch. Has a chance to get it back down to a single possession. Parker trying with that three-pointer. We mentioned he can get it going. Another rebound for Mims. Julius Mims left double-digit rebounds before you know it. Still only four points for him, though, tonight. Denker working back to his right, finds Mims end line. He slams it home. Slicing into the play at timeout taken by Idaho State. Six points since the half for Julius Mims. And the Vandals lead by six after this beautiful find from Quinn Denker to Julius Mims. So it's now a six point lead for the Idaho Vandals. Take a look at the upcoming schedules for these teams. Heading down the stretch in Big Sky play. We'll start first with Idaho State. As you look at the Idaho huddle there, Weber State coming up at home. Northern Arizona, Northern Colorado, Montana. The others remaining there down the stretch. The Idaho Vandals. This rivalry game here, and then it's on to Northern Colorado, Northern Arizona, Montana, and uh, Northern Arizona at uh, Northern Colorado at home. One more before the Big Sky Tournament for Idaho is Portland State. I have an under 12 timeout coming up too after Idaho State took the timeout. First use timeout for either team in this game. Take away here by Idaho. Idaho's at its largest lead after the Mims dunk last time down. Taryn Frank is back into the game. Double high screens coming up for Denker. Ranstrom very effectively jumped it, though. Five to shoot. Frank has his pocket picked by Arrington. Gonzalez chasing him from behind. Good dribble by Arrington. Continues the nifty moves. Gets to a step to finish. And a three-point play opportunity for Arrington and Idaho State. This will be the fourth for Malik Arrington when we come back. He has 15 points now to lead all scorers 
he can get the Bengals within three when we return. Back here at ICCU Arena in Moscow. Here's the steal by Malik Arrington. Gets it in the front court, keeps his dribble, gets to the step and got fouled by Chris Gonzalez. Just trying to stay straight up. Gonzalez talking about it. As a chance for a three-point play for Malik Arrington. This will be his fourth opportunity. He's converted on three of them. So here's the shot for Arrington, and he misses that opportunity. So he's had a couple, uh, pardon me, he converted on two of them. He's had a couple that haven't gone his way, but still gets the bucket to get Idaho State back within four. Tyson Rose coming off the screen. He's already in double figures for his fifth straight game with 11 points. He'll come set one for Quinn Denker. EJ Neal, jab step and shot off the mark. Arrington the rebound. Now seven rebounds for Arrington to go alongside the 15 points. to trying to get down the left side of the lane against Rose gets fouled another chance for a three-point play for Malik Arrington it's on Kyson Rose his third Arrington a fifth three-point play opportunity today he's got a quick step to get in against the side of Kyson Rose you can make it a one-point game here at the free-throw line. But he misses another one. Wow, uncharacteristic for Arrington, who came in a 75% free-throw shooter. He's had three three-point plays that haven't gone his way now. Dinker getting switched on to by Johnson. Goes over to Neal for three. Mims trying to get an offensive rebound. He does. That's 10 rebounds for Julius Mims now. Denker trying to feed Rose. It was tipped by Johnson. Takeaway now by Tomley. Tomley up the floor. Tomley slicing the lane. He's fouled. Free throws for Miguel Tomley upcoming. And he can nod it for Idaho State at the line. EJ Neal's fourth foul. They're on the play in transition. Chris Gonzalez is going to come back in, but EJ Neal will have to sit here for a little while, under 10 to go. Two shots for Tomley. Tomley is 32 of 41 on the year, now 33 of 42. That's just under 80%. Tomley is 11th in the big sky in scoring and almost 13 a game. Could have five points now this afternoon as he makes both free throws. So he does have five points. He ties the score up at 43. Lossing game coming around off the handoff. Looking for Rose down in the paint. Rose ducks his shoulder into Parker and he traveled. Alex Pribble telling him he wanted him to go up with it initially. He was trying to get steady there in the post. Just kind of the bobble into the extra step. Bergen trying to work on Danker into the post with Parker. And Parker takes a hit from Kyson Rose. That'll be four on Kyson Rose. The boos come out. Foul trouble is here for Idaho in the form of EJ Neal and Kyson Rose, each with four fouls to Kai Hardy, the freshman from Fairfield, California, having to come in now in important moments in a tie game. Julius Mims jumps in front of a pass intended for Parker, takes it away. 
Mims, 12 rebounds. And he's been wreaking havoc on the defensive side of things. Lossing game going to get going. Kick out Gonzalez. Danker asking Mims to get moving under 10 to shoot. Idaho resets the play. Denker off to blossom game for three. Hardy an offensive rebound after the check-in to Gonzalez. That three's too long. Parker slips on a wet spot. Arrington out with it for Idaho State. Tomley's open for three for the lead. Too long. Blossom game being chased from behind. Nearly lost his dribble down to a knee, and Alex Pribble will take a timeout. 30-second timeout. We will stay right here with 8.32 to go. Idaho will have two timeouts left. Idaho State is down to one. Good look for Miguel Tomley. Last time down to try to give Idaho State the lead and make it a nine-point run. It was 43-37, Idaho forcing the Bengals into their third timeout. Both teams lost their first half timeouts. This is the Tomley three. And Blossingame almost got picked out here from behind by Trent Johnson. You can see Alex Pribble trying to settle it down there, pleading for the timeout. And the whole gym was trying to tell Blossingame as he was bringing it down the floor that he, he had a wolf on his back, on his tail. Idaho State's really cleaned up the turnovers here in the second half. Only three turnovers since the break. They forced four in that time frame. This has been a close game throughout. Danker driving, keeping with it, and it's off Danker, out of bounds. Idaho State, another opportunity to stretch this run here in the second half. EJ Neal is up to check in with four fouls. No, they send him back to the bench. They thought about it for a second. Mims trying to stop Parker down low. Idaho State definitely wants to go there. Mims bats it away. Another steal forced by Julius Mims. Danker front court now. End line Hardy. Hardy hard dribble, had a man on his back. A foul is called against Trent Johnson. It'll be immediate timeout as well. We come back still tied. It's heating up in Moscow, 43 all with under eight to go. Tie game here with 7.56 to go. Time for a little trivia. We talked about the rivalry between these two teams. It's been since 1932. Two years ago, the longest continuous rivalry was these Idaho Vandals and Washington State. Uh, State got cut off on that graphic, I think. That was Battle of the Palouse. Now the question is, what's the current longest continuous rivalry in college basketball? Give you a hint, it is out of the Big 12. Well, Big 12 for this year. And that would be two teams out of the Lone Star State, Baylor and Texas. Now the longest continuous. That's since 1908. Washington State and Oregon State actually have the second longest since 1909. Washington State not far away from this Idaho campus, just nine miles across the border. That was a big bummer. The Battle of the Palouse did resume this year. Idaho fell in the season opener on the road at Washington State, the short trip over to Pullman. Danker trying to stay with it. He saves it, though, to Tomley. Tomley up the floor, Arrington off his right side. Been stuck on 43s here for a while. Idaho State has scored the last six to tie it up. Tomley into the post. Nice cut by Arrington. Leaves it off with Johnson. He's fouled by Trey Blossingame. First foul on Blossingame. See they're coming in from behind on Trent Johnson. Johnson who has no points in this game. Five of seven at the line this year. First free throw too long. 
Taryn Frank back in for Takai Hardy. Big couple minutes for Hardy after both Rose and Neal have four fouls each. And the second free throw no good for Johnson. Frank, though, can't save it on the end line. Back to Idaho State. Will the score ever move here in the second half? This next bucket you'd figure is going to be an important one, especially with the foul trouble. Idaho comes up with another steal on the Parker pass intended for Arrington. A leave off with Blossom game, and who was that goaltending? Johnson was able to tap it. Into the front court, three missed by Tomley. We'll get a look at it at the next dead ball to look back at that opportunity for Blossom game on the drive. Johnson got the block, according to the officials here. It was a close place, under seven to go. Denker trying to take the cap off the basket for Idaho. Gonzalez now working down on Tomlin. Gonzalez off glass, and Idaho scores for the first time in the last few minutes. Gonzalez now is six points. Idaho's up by 245-43. The Vandals, even when the shots weren't falling, they were playing tough defense, and Braden Parker hits the floor. Julius Mims is being whistled. Second foul on Mims, and it is the bonus for Idaho State, a one and one. So two fouls on Julius Mims. This is a look back at the drive that Idaho had with Trey Blossing game. We need to see it slowed down. It didn't look like it was blocked off the glass, which in live run of play, it kind of looked that way. Parker with a one and one opportunity for Idaho State. Trying to get it back to even. There's going to be a lane violation here on this shot. It's missed. Who was in first? It was Idaho. You could see bodies toppling into the key before the shot from Parker. He'll get second life here. This is still one and one. Alex Pribble trying to relax there at the scorer's table as Parker gets the second opportunity. Now nine points for Braden Parker. Bengals can tie it up here behind Parker at the free throw line. He hits the second. Very important lane violation. Game tied back up at 45. Danker blocked away by Randstrom. Isaiah Griffin at the controls now. I know State still trying to take its first lead in some time. Been able to get tied here for a while. Nice leave off to Griffin, and he finishes for the Bengals to put him in front. 47-45, under six to go. These teams in one possession games. Idaho is three and four. Idaho State is three and three. Idaho State, the advantage in games of six points or less, six and five compared to Idaho's four and six. We have one more look at this play from earlier. Ah, that block looked like it came just before it went off glass. Quinn Danker back in live action, misses a three for Idaho. So a good job by the official sought by an eyelash. At least from what it looked like to us there. Harrington being chased into the corner by two. Stutters and goes. Lost the, the dribble and he traveled. Julius Mims was coming in trying to take it away. And now some frustration from Ryan Looney in Idaho State. They thought it was a foul that sent Arrington to the floor. 
Here's a look back at the play. I guess because of the lost handle and then rolling it over for Arrington, but that play was a little bit all over the place as well. Gonzalez down the left side. He's got an open finger roll to tie it at 47. Nobody picked him up off the high screen. Griffin comes out to get a handoff. Mims trying to take away an opportunity for Randstrom. Parker and Bergen now. Arrington back in his hands. Rose fades back down to Parker. Rose back in with four fouls. Trying to stop Parker who gets to the left hand and puts Idaho State back in front. 12 for Braden Parker. Now Julius Mims trying to drive down on Randstrom. Put his shoulder down. That's a tough finish off glass for Julius Mims. He has eight points now to go along with his 12 rebounds. 49 all. Under four timeout is looming. Crowd coming alive. Mims just bats another ball away. Denker up the floor. Denker sees an opportunity to drive on Griffin, gets him in the air, finishes, and one opportunity for Quinn Denker. The Idaho bench explodes to meet their point guard. Two-point lead. He can cap a three-point play when we come back. Quinn Denker coming up with an important play for Idaho, all tied at 49 before he got Isaiah Griffin in the air. And big emotion, he says, finally, after he gets the bucket and the whistle. We mentioned Idaho had frustration earlier. Quinn Denker, an opportunity to give Idaho a three-point lead. The foul on Griffin was his second by our count. So Danker at the free throw line, chance to cap a three point play. It's eight points for Danker now. 83% free throw shooter this year. And nine points for Danker. Idaho by three, under four to go. As I mentioned, Idaho State's been slightly better in these Games decided by six points or less. Idaho has been in some real tight ones of late. Both teams finishing close games on Thursday. Idaho State against Eastern Washington. Idaho against Weber State. Tough play for Tom Lee. Ball's loose. Blossom game on the floor. Quickly gets it out of his hands to Kyson Rose before it could have been a travel. Rose coming up the floor. Just make sure to clear the timeline. You can hear a pin drop now at the start of this offensive possession. Julius Mims getting downhill, doesn't get the bounce. Randstrom the rebound. Out come the Bengals. Ryan Looney calling his point guard back. Malik Arrington resetting the play. Bergen back with Arrington, now 12 to shoot. Parker sets the screen high. Tomley down to the baseline. Tomley doubled up, Rose tries to stay straight up. Tomley rolls it over Iron to get this one in one. Seven for Miguel Tomley. 52-51, Vandals. Dinker around the screen, trying to get off glass. Parker altered the shot defensively for Idaho State. Arrington up the floor against Rose. He gets grabbed on the floor, no shot. Kyson Rose will have fouled out. Rose clearly cut his arm out across Arrington on the drive. So with 2.06 left, Kyson Rose has fouled out for Idaho. They lose their big man. You could see his right arm stretch out in front of Arrington. You could see Alex Pribble letting Kyson Rose know that was his last foul. Taryn Frank is checking in.
Because it was on the floor, it was the ninth foul on Idaho. One and one for Malik Arrington. Free throws have been a bit of an adventure for him in this game. Seven of nine shooter from the floor. He's had five three-point play opportunities. But only 43% from the line in this game. First free throw, good for Arrington. 18 now for him. 52 all. Arrington can put Idaho State ahead. And it's good. 19 for Malik Arrington. 53-52, Idaho State down the stretch we come here in Moscow. Mims back and forth with Gonzalez. Gonzalez comes back to get it on a handoff. Gets downhill against Parker, and he finishes. Had the lean way out with the right hand. Chris Gonzalez has 10 points. His personal best was 11 against Portland State. He puts Idaho back in front by one. Arrington trying to drive, lost the dribble on his hip. Mims has a rebound for Idaho. Julius Mims is one rebound away from tying his season high. He's got 13 now. It was an important one for Idaho, chance to stretch a one point lead. Crowd calling out to Idaho on the offensive side. Bengals trying to lock down defensively. Gonzalez might go again. He just had his ninth and 10th points. Tough fadeaway, he's fouled. Free throws upcoming for Chris Gonzalez. A.J. Bergen, the foul. Two shots for Christian Gonzalez. There he got to the fadeaway. Bergen just closed out a little too far into the shooting area of Gonzalez. Ryan Looney, though, still shaking his head, didn't think so. Two big free throws for Gonzalez. He makes the first. Ties his season high in scoring. 77.5% free throw shooter in Idaho will take a timeout now. So the Vandals are down to one timeout left. Idaho State does have two. Earlier we said it had slipped to one. They misattributed a timeout. So the next free throw is critical for Gonzalez. It could get Idaho back to a three-point lead. Right now, we talked about the timeouts. Possession arrow is in favor of the Vandals. Next foul by Idaho is two shots for Idaho State, whether it's shooting or on the floor. Idaho State does have one foul to give right now. D'Angelo Menes, you see the experienced senior giving advice to the freshman. Well, what a game for Christian Gonzalez. He scored 11 against Portland State on December 30th. That was two days after Idaho's last win at home on December the 28th against Sacramento State. A buzzer beating three by Quinn Denker. Gonzalez misses the second. It's a two-point game. So he matches his season high of 11. Idaho State could tie or take the lead on this possession. Crowd coming alive in Moscow. The Bengals trying to come up with something here on the road. Parker facing up. Now he's going to back down Mims. Franks tries to double. It's out for three, pops in and out on the Bergen try and a foul against Idaho State on the rebound. It is the sixth on the Bengals. The Vandals get the stop. If they can handle the inbounds, they will likely get fouled. Third personal on Braden Parker, who picked up two early in this game. Great shot opportunity for Bergen. He almost nailed it. And you see Parker's right hand coming in on Gonzalez. So this is where Idaho struggled just 48 hours, well, less than 48 hours ago against Weber State. It was with the press break. We'll see what the Vandals have set up here with 36 and 8 tenths. Terry and Frank taking a timeout, and that's the last timeout for Idaho. So 
It's a nervous energy for sure. Folks who know what happened a couple days ago. And Alex Pribble taking a deep breath to draw this up for the Vandals against the press. The officials went to go check in across the way. Is it on the clock? I think it is. They're going to go to the monitor and make sure. Robert, uh, Lehigh, Lane, Barney, Cody Crum, they're all lurking over there by the monitor. 36.8. At two tenths of a second to come off. So if you're Idaho State, you've got a couple options here. You can, one, of course, try to force the five-second call on the inbounds. If it comes inbounds, you've got an opportunity to trap. If you get Idaho into a precarious situation, maybe you flirt with a 10-second call, but then a foul's got to come. Ryan Looney just gave instructions to Braden Parker defensively. Idaho has... Four up, they'll change the inbounder to Trey Blossing game. Taryn Frank is down the floor being uh, marked up by Braden Parker. So here's the inbound, Idaho's out of timeouts. Blossing game lobbing it to Mims. He uses his height to catch it, gets doubled, breaks it up to Gonzalez. Idaho's not gonna go anywhere with that. They're gonna come force the foul call. Gonzalez keeping it in his hands right now and handing off to Danker. I don't think Idaho State really has the time to defend this out, but they're going to try for it. Six second differential game and shot clock. You'd think they'd rather extend the game, take a chance with Idaho missing a free throw. Denker kicking out Taryn Frank. Five to shoot. Frank has it picked out by Arrington. What do I know? Arrington into the front court against pressure. Off glass. Doesn't get the shot. It's loose. Arrington trying to get it to Parker. Still loose. Mims has it. No one can catch him. 55 to 53 with a defensive stand. A great look for Malik Arrington. Idaho stops it, controls the loose ball, and wins by two. We'll come back. We'll show you that. We'll talk to Alex Pribble as well. Vandals win in this rivalry matchup against the Bengals. Idaho wins a tight one, 55 to 53. Alex Pribble will be on his way over with the Vandals winning in this rivalry game. You see the hugs all around. Kyson Rose into double figures for his fifth consecutive game. And the Vandals able to finish it down the stretch. Coach Pribble's gonna throw the headset on. He's gonna take a deep breath. Coach, I saw you taking that breath. That's, oh, was a, I out there? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a tight one for your guys. Coming off a really emotional game on Thursday. Everything about a rivalry, a great crowd. Just your thoughts on the game. Yeah, look, I'm uh, sorry, I've got to compose myself here. I'm so proud of these guys. You know, I'm so proud of these guys. It's been a defining characteristic of this team from the very start that when we have tough moments, when we have adversity, we stick with it. These guys believe in each other. They believe in what we're doing. They believe in the process, and they found a way to get it done tonight. Talking about sticking with each other, I mean, there have been times this year where it feels like you guys just can't catch a break. Right. You end up with injuries to key players. And no no D'Angelo Minnis this weekend. Yep. What is it about this team? Because I think a lot of folks looking at Thursday night could have thought, oh, man, that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. But you guys have just been able to recover yeah, off of those. It's belief. That's what it is. We got a high character young men um, who believe in what we're doing, but believe in each other more than anything. So when someone goes down, the next man steps up. This is a special group. You know, it, it has been a hard year. There's been a lot of injuries, you know, three high impact starter types that have gone down. Um, you know, things haven't gone our way, and yet they stick with it. They stay with it. And for a first year team to have that level of belief in each other, um, is really special. And so I think we're building something great here. I want to thank all the fans that showed up tonight. This place was rocking. This is what ICCU should feel like. Uh, they really, really kind of spurred us to the victory tonight. So we appreciate everybody. Julius Mims in the second half, he was held scoreless in the first half. 
he came up really big not only on the offensive end but rebounds he gets to that final loose ball yeah and there were a lot of good efforts across your team today Chris Gonzalez with 11 points as Huge. well matching a season high yeah it, juice was dominant in the second half you know and that's the player we've come to expect him to be so it's huge for him to step up like that and help us get that done and you're right about Chris Gonzalez you know another guy that's kind of had some injuries throughout the year a true freshman but he showed he's capable of tonight he's got a high level of confidence I think he has a huge huge future here in a Vandal jersey um, and there's a lot of guys man across the board that just stepped up and made plays so um, they're not always going to be pretty especially this year especially early in this process but they found a way to get it done and I'm really proud of them last thing for you coach when you were hired you talked a lot about the progression of this first season was going to be getting to a point towards March where you felt like your team was a tough out for anybody yeah it kind of feels like it, it's turning a corner towards that right now what do you, what do you think about where this team is at compared to where you started this year yeah look it's process over product for us it's about every day getting better and our guys have been so committed to that they get better every single day um, you know we got a long way to go but I think that's right I think we're gonna be a tough out in Boise and we're just gonna keep getting better so um, like I said proud of these guys we got to keep moving forward and um, yeah hopefully we got a, a bunch of vandals down there in Boise to support us as well well congrats on your first rivalry win in the series as the head coach of Idaho thank you very much go vandals Alex Pribble with us post game Idaho winning this one here against Idaho State we look back at this final play Idaho State decided to defend it out looked like a good call with Arrington picking the pocket Quinn Denker stays up ball gets loose and one more tap out to Julius Mims who just outran the field but Kyson Rose blocking for him the horn had already sounded at that point and Idaho an emotional win as we take a look at our player of the game and it is none other than Julius Mims Mims scoring all of his points in the second half as he came up with eight for Idaho hauled in 13 rebounds one shy of his season high and he was just a critical player for Idaho down the stretch and it's what a game for the Vandals coming back off an emotional loss on Thursday night that's a tough road swing for Idaho State as they drop a couple close ones to Eastern Washington and Idaho but the Vandals get their fourth in Big Sky play this year big thanks to our entire crew all of you for being with us on this Saturday afternoon as the Vandals snap a seven game skid in this rivalry series with Idaho State winning it at the horn 55 to 53 this is Trevor Williams saying so long from Moscow Idaho